A good number of Kenyan population is suffering from drug and alcohol addiction. And with the efforts of the government uh, trying to enforce laws and trying to make sure that the, uh, the officers of the provincial administration are really stopping uh, this cheap liquor and cheap drinks from, uh, from being used around the country, it's still an expert view that it will take a loving and a caring rehabilitation and counseling to get the many people around Kenya from the kind of addiction that is wasting them away. And today in the People Talk Show, we have with us a former alcohol addict, uh, Terry Washira, who's been through it and has lost almost everything in her effort to deal with alcoholism. And she's here today with us trying to help us understand and talking into the lives of people who are in one way or another affected by drug and alcohol addiction. My name is Solomon Were and welcome to the show. Welcome, Madam Terry. Thank you so much, Mr. Were. Yes. Yes. Having been there, done that, what did you come out with? <laughs> yes, um, my story is long, but I'll start somewhere. I am in recovery. I'm seven years sober today. Seven years sober? Yes. And You've I thank God. How, old, uh, how long were you in addiction? More than 15 years. More than 15 years. Yes. Today you're seven years sober. Yes. Give us your story. Um, I started uh, drinking when I was married. After we got married with my husband. My husband is called Washira. And uh, we started a family like any other couple, struggling because we are both fr fresh from college. And uh, we quickly had uh, f first child, the second in quick succession. Okay, the gap was two years. And uh, we were both hard working and we worked hard towards uh, fulfilling our goals in life as a marriage couple. And eventually, um, every Sunday we would, we would go out. You know, we go to church and then take our children out. And uh, as at that time, <clears throat> uh, my husband was taking Tasca export. Me, I was taking a soda. And uh, as we went on, um, I picked uh, his uh, drink and I put a few drops in my soda because I thought this man is enjoying himself <clears throat> this stuff which I have never, never tasted. And I really wanted to taste. And that is how uh, now I burdened the soda. So every Sunday we would go out and I would take a, you know, a next bottle or two. He didn't have an issue with that. You case. also abandoned the soda in quick succession. <laughs> Slowly, because I was mixing, mixing until I realized now it is even diluting the, 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 the taste of the soda. So now I abandoned, I bought a, I mean, he od even ordered for me. He didn't have an issue in the case it is an outing. Pure export now. Yes. So I picked the habit from there, and uh, every Sunday or every other outing, he was also a good man. Uh, once in a while, he would take me for dine and dance. And the family was doing well, and they were growing up. And uh, we eventually bought our first car. Later on, we started planning how we can buy a house. By this time now, uh, our children, our firstborn was in nursery. So we bought our first house, um, I'm sorry, our first car. Later on, we bought a second car. And this is the car, which my, my car is the one we use for the deposit of a house that we bought. And when we moved, uh, later on I, I had the daddy born, they were all girls. And uh, our lifestyle had changed because now uh, we had gone a grade higher. And uh, we used to have life, uh, you know, good life actually. So you could afford more drinks and you could afford more time together and the happy times. Yes, even taking our children uh, you know, to, on a holiday. So I was a secretary, and he was a supervisor where he was. Eventually became a manager. So life was not very bad. Uh, financially, we were okay. We even started buying a few uh, properties here and there in terms of plots. So eventually now, the drink, my drinking uh, was still uh, coming up on a, on a heavy note. Uh, later on, I bought, uh, we bought my car, because you see the first one we had uh, paid the deposit with. And uh, now uh, he resigned from where he was working. He started his own company. And uh, that period, it was not very easy. Because you see, I had to do all the typing. He, didn't have, he couldn't afford a, sec a secretary that time. And uh, later on, 
he got one. And life was even much better. He was a hardworking man, as I said before. So life picked up again. And uh, we could afford going out, you know, even better than before. Good hotels. So he also employed a driver. By this time, I'm dropping the children in the morning and picking them in the evening. So I take them to school in the morning. When I go to work in the evening, I, p I pick them up. So when he employed the driver, I didn't have to do that in the evening. So the driver used to take them home with his car. And that is now the time I found I had also a few uh, hours in my hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a place we normally used to go to drink. We used to call it drive-in. Mm -hmm. You drive and then you hoot and then someone comes and uh, you know, uh, serves you while mm -hmm. you're in the car. Mm -hmm. And that is a place where even among our, f our friends used to team up with other couples and we do drive there. So this habit, I continued with it. Like Saturdays after we do shopping with other lady friends of mine, we would meet that same joint. That now even without your husband being present. Yes, yes. And in any case, he also, I used also to tell him to me pitia that place. And he had no problem. He had no problem. Because, you know, nothing wrong was being done anyway. Like Saturday afternoon and then by five I would be home. But eventually my drinking took another turn that uh, when I left the job now, I mean, when I, at the end of the day, since the driver was taking the children home, now I would pass through there, uh, swallow a few very quickly, and uh, go home. And now even we had drinks in the house, actually. Your body was now demanding more drinks. I think so. It's just a habit, really, that time. And we even had alcohol in the house, actually. We had vodka, we had uh, wines, we had tuskers. So it was really not an issue, but now it became an issue when one time I found him home at nine. And then he asked me, what time is this? And then he gave me a very big slap. And I think he had known I'm getting late, late, late. And now he wanted to stop that habit. But you know, I, I think I was rude when I asked him, I don't even know the time. Now he asked me, now surely the kids, they need attention. You yes. don't even know what they eat. Mm -hmm. You have not even checked their homework. Yes. And that started our small differences, but it led to another fight after a long time. Then, of course, I stopped immediately to drink. And then I would rush through, through there again. Drive in. Drive in, the drive in uh, corner. And then uh, I remember the third uh, fight that we had, it was bad. Because uh, he came early, and I was also early in the house, but I was drinking now from the house. Not that, that was not the issue, but the issue was, I think I was rude. I remember, I don't remember what I said, but he really beat me up. Uh, in, in, your, in your opinion, before we continue, uh, don't you think uh, that uh, alcoholism and drinking plays quite a big role when it comes to family conflicts? Yes, alcoholism and drug addiction is a brain disease. And the person who is affected, we normally say one person is infected, and that person affects the whole family. So my acceleration of drinking, I did not see it that time. This is the time I'm reflecting where I started. And I see that maybe, I'm saying just maybe, if I had maybe a counselor or maybe someone told me the, where I'm heading to, I'm saying maybe I could have stopped. But mm -hmm. now uh, things went from bad to us. So after this beating, I decided to leave this man but I, I don't think I was, I wanted to leave him. I wanted to show him, teach him a lesson. Yes, in quotes. In quotes. And show him that you're important. Yes. And you and can have your way anyway. Yes. So I planned how to move from that house. By this time we had four daughters. And uh, the last one was about, about seven years. So I planned it quietly. I didn't tell anybody. I waited until the children are in school. Because they were, you know, uh, that, that day I don't remember what happened. I think I rushed them to school and then uh, I had already organized where I'm going to, to move to. And uh, I came back very quickly, I took my clothes and I went. And then I made it sure it is a Friday. That time there were no mobiles, so he could not get me until Monday when he would ring in the office. And that is the lesson I wanted to teach him, according to me that time. So now um, I had gotten a few friends from uh, Bruburu. Mm -hmm. And I told them to get me a house, but I didn't say it was mine. I said I had a cousin from Nakuru who, needs, who needed a house urgently. So a house was got for me in Omoja, and that is where I moved to. I furnished it since, I, as I said, I was working as a secretary. I had a good job. 
and uh, they started another life. All that, all that is being created by this alcoholism in the in the home now. It is, it is. That is now looking for more room to drink. Yes. And supervised. Yes. And true enough, as I moved to the other side, now I became a bachelor. So there are no children, nobody to tell me what to do and where, when to go home. No responsibilities. No responsibilities, and my alcoholism went a notch higher. Though I was not spoiling any job, I didn't mess my job. The evening, imagine, in the evening I would ask when we are stopping the work. I mean, we would stop at 4.30. By 5, I would be somewhere. And I remember asking somebody who was leaving those sides, which are you are drinking then, this side? This side? Then he told me a few, a few places. But anyway, I still had a car, so I just drove, drove, and I discovered new friends. When you are drinking, it's very easy to, to get your friends. You, you don't bond. even have to look for them. They bond faster? They bond faster. Even if I, right now I am drinking and I just drive to a, a, a pub, I would make friends very easily. What do you think accelerates the bonding? It is the drinking and the loneliness. People who are drinking, they, are, they, they want to bond and to feel they are part of a certain community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you now if I want to walk in a pub right now yes. and sit there at a corner and start ordering a drink, yes. you'll find someone saying, a waiter coming and said, hey, madam, unakunywa nini na dhati mujama anataka kukunulia. Is People it? who drink are very generous. Mm. They are very, very generous. With the drinking. With the they drinking. They are generous with the drinking, with not, the drinking. not any other thing. Uh, uh, not, the, not anything else. Because now you are in another, in another environment. Yes. And you like to feel you are part and parcel of that environment. And that is why boarding in drinking is very easy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know anybody's name. And neither do they ask anybody in, in a name. But at the same time, uh, I found myself drinking in the sense that uh, even these people I joined, yeah, some of them we were working together. And uh, by 10, I would ask them, hey, mbona muna kibia haraka sana? And it's not even late. Looking at the time, it would be 10. So my drinking went a, a notch higher. And uh, apparently, I used to shop for this, for the other children, for my children. Oh, yes. During the working hours, mm -hmm. then I would rush. I would tell my boss I'm going to the bank. Mm -hmm. And I would buy them quickly, quickly, because I didn't want to meet Mr. Washira. Mm -hmm. I was fearing that he might beat me up or something. Oh, yes. You had left the home now. You've left being a wife and being a mother. Yes. Did it not leave you with some emptiness and loneliness? How, how, how did you deal with that? I was not lonely at all because uh, I was working full time. By four, by five, I used to be in that joint. Yes. But in between, there is a thought that used to come, but sorry, I, let me uh, go back. After I moved on a Friday, he tried to call me on a Monday. He, he called me. Yes. And I, I disconnected. Three times he called it's, that it's day. It's natural, him wanting to know where you are. Yes, and I disconnected. And then the other person who called me after one month is my big, my big brother, mm -hmm. who was like my dad to me. Oh, yes. It, there was a big gap between me and him, so he was like my dad, uh, someone I really respected. And he told me how upset he is that he learned that I have walked out of my marriage. Mm. And then he set up a meeting, and uh, I confirmed that I'm going to that meeting on a Saturday. Because Mr. Washira had told him about that, how I left home. I confirmed that I'm going, but come Saturday, I was busy drinking with a certain lady. You forgot, or you I did not forget. deliberately missed that? I wanted to punish them. Because I knew now they were in high court they were waiting, in, waiting, for, waiting for Tere Washira. <laughs> so for me, I told this lady, do you know there are some people waiting for me somewhere to grill me and to, 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 to really crucify me? Crucify. Then I said, who? She knows my br big brown brother. I said, Mr. So-and-so, that's my brother's name. She said, no, 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 you can't be serious. You mean Washira and the wife of your brother and your brother, they are waiting for you now? I said, yes. She said, no, please, do me a favor. She pleaded, let's leave this drink. You rush, go see them, you come back. Mm -hmm. I said, if you want to represent me, don't deny me the pressures that I'm enjoying. What shall I enjoy? That, those are the words I said. And in fact, when you are drinking, the feelings become dead. Because if it is like numb, numb, yeah, that is a word. Because if it's like now, I can't do that. I can't do that to my brother. Your concern is alive again. Yes. So it went on. My brother was very annoyed that he never called me again. So it went on like that until uh, later on I got into a relationship. 
and I got a son. Um, when I got a son, life went on. I employed a house girl. But in between this, my girls used to come for me, I mean, to see me. They used to visit. And I would shop for them, I would, you know, we would talk on the phone. I even put a phone where I was working, I mean, in my home. If they don't get me at the place of work, we used to communicate. But at all this time, uh, things are moving and the girls are going on with their lives. And, you know, but my drinking was higher and higher. Until one time I became a victim of uh, retrenchment. The company that I worked for retrenched five years and under. And I fell in that category since I was only four years. But it is not because of performance. Mm -hmm. But I know very well it could have led to that, yes. the way I was drinking every day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I fell in this category, they gave me money, which I put in the bank, which was put in the bank. And uh, my life uh, went down. Uh, my drinking went higher. My eating went down. Because now you had lots of money in your bank account. Yes. And less responsibility. Less responsibility. I never thought of looking for a job. I said to myself, Wanjiro, give yourself a holiday. Did you ever thought of maybe calling your husband? Did, did you, did you had some spare love for him? No. Not that I can remember. I never remembered him, seriously speaking. I think the, the alcohol, alcohol is a brain disease, as I said, and it numbs the feelings. And it become now harder and harder, hardened and hardened, without me seeing it. Yeah, but this time now, when I was retrenched, I used to drink it from morning. I said to myself, you know, my friends are all working that time. And I bought a crate of uh, Tasca export I put in the house. So I'd drink in the morning. By 10, 11, I would sleep. Wake up at 3, 4. More time to yourself now. Yes, then I would go to the joints. In fact, they would even find me there, the people who are coming at 5. You're through with drinking, your private drinking in your house. You're now joining the rest. For company? Yes. And then I would drink until about 10 or 11. And then that, uh, I, I saw, you know, we didn't have a problem with the lad lady because I had a studying order. So the money went on, went on until one time I went to the bank and then the teller, cashier, told me there's no money. That time we used to write whatever slips and uh, she told me, the, you know, she whispered. Yes. She to, I, told, I told her it is not possible. Oh. Then I, she sent me to the, get the statement. That is when I saw that you there used was nothing. To, you used to just drink yes. and then sign off and they could, they would collect the money from the bank? No, I used to get money from the bank. Yes. I would go with the cash, Yes. whatever I'm drinking. You see, like now I used to withdraw once, once a week. Yes. And then of course, you know, minus, minus is not plus. So I used to minus my account by mm. drinking, you know, every week. Yes. But I didn't realize that this money will eventually get finished. We'll come back and we'll pick up from there. Asante. We are talking about the problem and the suffering addicts in this country. It is a big problem and something has got to be done about them. Because many of our men and women are being wasted away in a problem that can otherwise be solved and be rehabilitated then these people can become reasonable people in the society. I'm Solomon Were. Please don't change that dial. If you touch the remote, just touch it to increase the volume. Welcome back, viewer, to the People Talk Show, a talk show that highlights on topical issues of public concern. And today we are talking about alcohol and drug abuse and how these people in our society can be helped. You remember that there are many people out there who doesn't know what to do in the situation they are in and they are already addicted and nobody is helping them in any way. I'm talking to Terry Washira, a woman who has been transformed from a former addict to a counselor, an addict counselor who counsels the addict from their state to normal reasonable people back to be productive in the society. Welcome back. My big brother died mm. of heart attack. And I, I used to go for heart from my brother's office. In between, I'm dry. I'm missing the rent. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to my brother's office and give him uh, some stories. Then, of course, he's, he's looking at me. I'm now very, becoming very thin. And uh, because of the child, of course, he would sympathize and give me something. 
in between this i'm going to all my friends in nairobi mm. for her doubts mm. but one time uh, now later on uh, when he died i used to i switched to my sister-in-law mm. and uh, my sister-in-law used to say now what will i do with you in between this time when i'm going for her doubts there is a big brother of mine who was in baburi portland mm. he was a big man there he was, okay, he was an engineer and uh, he too fell in the trap of a, a, a you know addiction mm. He parted ways with his wife. He left his wife and, and two children in Mombasa. He came to Nairobi. Before my brother died, he used to come to my brother, you know, and my brother used to get him a job. And uh, two jobs. After he is paid, he disappears. Then when he comes, of course, there is no job. Until my brother told him, now, you are a big man, take care of yourself. My brother, this my brother, this second one, the one older than me, was living in Mukuru Kayaba, in the industrial area. I was now living in Kahawa but we are not meeting. But we used to meet with my sister-in-law for handouts, sometimes coincidentally. So my sister-in-law used so to you ask. So are two addicts who are depending on someone. My sister-in-law. Yes. The wife of my brother. So one time I had to and Yulisa, what will I do with you, the two of you? The day before yesterday, your brother was here. Now you are here. Surely. When will you get a hold of yourself? So one of these times when I went to her, she asked me, how is the son? I said, she is okay. I got classic honey. I said, he's not in school. What? Since when? Since May. Wanjiro, I can't believe this. Are you okay? She, she almost beat me up. Then she calculated, she looked at me. You know, I was not even feeling pain or anything. Concerns dead. It was, yeah, I told you, it numbs the feelings. I was just looking at her, wondering why she's making a fuss. <laughs> then she called my sister, the only sister I have in Karatina, and they organized, I take this boy to Karatina. My sister had young children, so I had, by this time, before this time, before this particular time, there's a lady who, told, who introduced me to insurance mm -hmm. at Westlands, British American Insurance, and I started uh, selling insurance. And you know, you don't get paid until you get business. Yes. So, but anyway, it was somewhere where I can look forward to going, but mm -hmm. I started selling kiddo, kiddo. So during this time now, she had somewhere to contact me. My sister, I know, had somewhere where she can leave a message. Mm -hmm. So one time I found the message and I called her back. Those times there were no mobiles, only landlines. So she told me, she called me to her office. She told me now we have agreed with Mombi. My sister is called Mombi. Take the child to Karatina. I'll be sending the money. Let her bring up this boy. Because otherwise he goes, he's going to waste away. He's, not, he's growing up and he's not in school. That's how now I took my children, my child. I, he, she gave me money for the rent, for the girl, for this house girl. Mm -hmm. So that I married Isa, and then I took the child home. And then she told me, now, you, you yourself, you take care of yourself. That's how I came back to Nairobi very fast. And now I had to move from these two rooms now. You know, now it, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. And me, 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 peke young. So I reasoned, I went to look for a one room, Mabati house in Kangemi. And now I had to sell all these things. I went to Kangemi with just like a bag. Mm -hmm. And then this lady, the landlord there, asked me, where are your things? said, I don't have anything. <laughs> but I told her now I was uh, thrown away by my husband, pathological liar. She said, ah, they are all mad. Leave them alone. Why? Does she, he, he, he throw away I'm such Maybe a beautiful woman. she'd gone through some problem too. I think so. And but you know, compounding the belief. I, ha I was so happy because now she's siding with me. Because I didn't give her the story. And she's now with me. She gave me a blanket and a, and a, and a, and a mattress. Mm -hmm. And that is how I started my life in Kagami. So from, I normally say my story is from grace to grass, but I want to say alcoholism and drug addiction is a brain disease. It affects, the, I was infected. One person is infected and the whole family is affected. How is the whole family affected? How many people did I affect? I affected many. my daughters, my son, my family. I destroyed my family. And the people who love me, my in-laws, you know, people who love me and who cares for me. But now, my own friends used to look at me when I'm going out for hard outs to their offices. Then they would wonder. One, I was very thin. I was now very unkept. A senior secretary, now I'm, my hair is going, you know, wild. I was very thin and even I would go without even applying anything, my foot on my face. Sometimes I would go with the muddy shoes in, in, in town. It was a total changeover. And at the same time, when someone is drinking, does not have any self-esteem. My self-esteem was at the lowest end. I could not see anything big. You, you are looking at me in a strange way. But me, I would wonder why you are looking at me in a strange way. 
because there's such you know the brain is affected the reasoning is affected okay before we come to the point whereby you now started recon recollecting yourself and reconstructing yourself to becoming who you are now uh, would you mind tell me uh, who are these people that you separated with that later on you got to uh, reconcile with and oh my family yes okay um, I left uh, four daughters and I left my husband and also at the same time I have my other family where I belong who have given me birth and okay my, my parents were not there but I have brothers and sisters I have one sister I have also my father-in-law and my mother-in-law I know my in-laws who loved me so much even now they love me because during this time in fact it's good you have asked me my father-in-law had sent for me and she told he told me he cares for me and he do, he doesn't care and he doesn't want to know why we me and Washira we are not together but he wanted to recognize me that I am his daughter and he told me if you don't have any fear just borrow the fear to come here then I'll be refunding and I saw love even I went with my son and he did bless this boy and uh, he even asked me why I had named him my, my father because I, I don't know how Kikuyu tradition is but mm -hmm. my mother told me that is how it is he sh mm -hmm. I should have named him after him okay yeah, I, would have, I should have named my son after him, but uh, he loved the son and, you know, uh, he, he, he put me in another, another level. Yes. And I felt loved. He's the only one whom I... It's like you are now looking for love. Yes, I was seeking for someone to understand me and at least to appreciate, even where I was down, yes. just someone to tell me he lo she loves me mm -hmm. or he loves me. So now, uh, during this time, my brother, uh, I told you about my firstborn brother who, who died of heart attack. Mm -hmm. This other brother is in Mukuru Kayaba. Mm -hmm. One time he went to my sister-in-law's office. He's an addict too? Uh, yes, he was a very, very much addict. You remember, he came from Bambuli. He came to Nairobi after getting a job. Ed month he would disappear. He would drink until that money is finished. Coming back to the job, of course, is not there. And now, this day he went to my sister-in-law and told her, Today, give me something, but I'll never bother you again. Then she said, uh, oh, he was called Gatti. Gatti, I'm happy. If you have gotten yourself a job, I'm very excited. He said, I'll see your a job, mm. but I'll never bother you again. My brother is given something for the landlord and something to eat. And then he goes and writes this letter. He, buy, he goes and buy a, buys rat poison and a rope. And he writes a note. I'm tired of living. I don't want to be buried in Nyeri. I want to be buried in Nangata. Nasina ubaya namutu. And then at the bottom, he wrote my sister-in-law's number. That time, there were mobiles, the name and the number. So my brother committed suicide. He took the poison. Apparently, it didn't work in the night. Then he took the rope and hanged. Why we know that is because of their post-mortem. He was sworn, yeah, but everything was on the table. So now, the following day, the, the, the neighbor is cleaning the kufagia pale inche, a lady. Then she says, uh, my brother's door is open, checks, you know, how come, you know, that door is open. Then he finds my brother, and then he's, she screamed. Then a neighbor now rushes to industrial police to call the police. So now my sister-in-law is called, and then she called my brother, my other brother. I have only one brother who is alive. He was working in Westlands. Then he called her son. Her son was a big man. So the, the two went to identify the body at City Moshari. That's how I lost my brother in alcoholism 2006. How did this contribute to a turnaround? Now, my brother, as he had written, I don't want to be buried in Nyeri, I want to be buried in Langata. Come Monday now, my sister is looking for me in my place of work where I was going for insurance. She called the whole day I wasn't there. I was busy drinking in Kangemi. She called on Tuesday morning. I have not gone. Something touched me at, at, at around it too. I felt I wanted to call there because that is where we picked the messages from the client, I can be called to close the deal, I can be called to take up the premiums and then I bring them to the office. So I called then the secretary tells me, Mrs. Washira, honestly, there's a lady who has called since yesterday and she sounds desperate. And she's told me, I'm not giving you any other message, call that lady. So she told me the name and then I, I you know, I got, something touched me. Then, do you, you know what I felt that day? I felt maybe my children have become sick, maybe my children have dead, you know why? The other children, I've never communicated for so long. Mm -hmm. The ones you left with their father. Yes. The other one, I don't even know how he has been. I don't even call there. The sister took her. The one now in Karatina. Yes. That is where my son is. Mm. I don't, don't call them. I don't call the others. And now I have been in my own island. 
So I, from the call box, I called very quickly my sister-in-law. Then she told me, the first thing she said, where are you? Wanjiro, where are you? Then I said, I'm in Kagemi. Didn't you go to work? I'm sick. What did I say about lying? <laughs> Automatic, <laughs> pathological lie. <laughs> and she said, now, I want to see you. I said, when? I said, now. No, now it's about three. You can't reach industrial area. Then he said, tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Then I said, I, is it the children? Because it is too kadika fikria. I can say, no. Oh, imagine the relax. But I want to see you first thing in the morning. I can't see you fair. I can't say, borrow. I'll come and, you know, to Talipa Badai. Mm -hmm. So first thing in the morning, I went to her office. And this is what she told me about my brother, how he took his life. And even she, told, she showed me that letter. And now my brother was ly lying in. Mortuary. Don't forget now, he died Friday night mm -hmm. after she left. He left her office, committed suicide, and now <clears throat> he told me now he's, what happened, what transpired, and now this is Wednesday. So she says, I've called the wife, and I've called my relatives. Most of my relatives are in Nairobi, and we are burying him on Saturday. As per his request, uh, wish, we are burying him on Langa, in Langata. So I can be now, are you coming home? I said no. So let's meet, call me on Friday. So I went and uh, coming back now to Kangemi, where I was drinking his wines and spirits. It was only by a lady called Joki. We are calling her Kijo. And I told Kijo, how, you know, what she told me, how come your eyes are red? I said, I have lost my brother. Mm. He said, oh, Paul Sana, let me buy you one for, the, for, for Paul. So everybody coming in there that day mm. used to be told, you are coming making noise and Wajiru has lost his brother, mm. her brother. Mm. Oh, Pole, 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 please give her two for my Pole. So the whole of that week, nilikuwa na kona yangu ya Pole. Wow. And don't forget, these are spirits. Yes. They were smelling bad. Mm -hmm. This is the time I, I recollect. Uh, they did, they did smell bad. But anyway, the whole of that week I was there, almost killing myself now. Come Saturday now, we are in. Barrio. The barrio. Uh, now, there are prayers, 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 prayers. The last prayers now, so that we intern him, is from the catechist, uh, from Holy Family Basilica. And he says, pointing at the coffin, if you see a case like this one, another one might follow. Suicide is contagious. Then that thing struck my sister-in-law, struck my sister-in-law. I was very thin this time. I was very unkept. I was the opposite of what I am today. And she remembered, she just looked at me and saw death. And uh, after we were now greeting each other, she told me, Wanjiro, I want us to go home. I said, no, I'll come home. She said, no, what's wrong with you? Your sister is here and you can spend the night in my house while she tells you about the sun. I said, no, I'll come home. I'll come tomorrow. You know why? You know I had drinks in Kangemi? Yes, the drinks for condolence. The, yeah, this is now... It's, it's, we call it insanity in alcoholism now. It reaches that level where you have no feelings. The feelings are dead, Kabisa, long dead. If I cannot go to, with my sister to my sister's in law's place, and you be a mother, mutoto, and mutoto wangu, what do you call that? Insanity. Insanity. Now, come tomorrow. Of course, when I left to Kagemia, now, when I'm really a kutoa vumbi, unajua vumbi langata tukimuaga hii ni vumbi. But the, the following day now, she go, I go to their place and then uh, to my sister-in-law's house. And then she tells me, after I'm given tea and whatever, she, I'm give, I told Wajiro, I want to help you. Now my sister-in-law is the one telling me, I want mm -hmm. to help you. Mm -hmm. I've looked at the case of uh, your brother Gatia, mm -hmm. and I want to help you. I want to take you to a rehab. Then I asked her, what is a rehab? That time I didn't know, of course. Then she says, it's a place where you can get counseling. And I'm sure, Wanjiro, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure that you turn around. I've looked at you and I know if you are willing to get well, I want to help you, I want to sponsor you. Then I told her I'm, I'm ready. She didn't trust me. Of course she can't. Then uh, she says, no, think about it. Ring me on Thursday. If you seriously want to consider that because I'm paying money, yeah? Ring me on Thursday, I call her on Wednesday. Between this time, mm -hmm. I used to go to Holy Family in town. I used to wait for the people to come out of the mass. I would go there in front. I would talk to God, crying. Because there are times I felt I didn't, I didn't want to drink, but the body was weak. Yes. There's a time I talked to God, I told God, let me tell you, I want to go back to my family. But God, what, why am I drinking? You told us you made us in your own image. But if, do you drink yourself, if you are in the same image? 
I want to stop drinking, but I don't know how. My body is weak, but my heart, I feel like I'm Well, so, sorry, we, we have very little time. Yeah. And now uh, I just want you to uh, recap very fast about mm -hmm. how, you know, you finally went to the rehab. Yes. And uh, the rest, of course, is history. Yes. And you're now a made person. And, uh, and uh, the things that you like people to know yeah. about addiction and how others in the society can be assisted. Yes. So uh, after I was, I was taken to a rehab for three months. And that was my turning point. I met a lady who was a counselor, and we did it, struck like uh, the same story. And I told her I would like to be a counselor like her. So she told me talk to the director. After I talked to the director, he told me, towards the end, take my number. Towards the end, my sister-in-law came and told me he, she, she wanted me to go back home. I told her what home. Said I want you to go to Ashira's house because they are also cancelled. We also encourage families to be cancelled. And she was she told that if I want to go back to the same environment, I may relapse. So that is how now I got home. I went back home and it was not easy, but we had a case. To rehab, we had a, a session with Washira. Washira. During this time, Washira got, got married. He left my children. My two daughters were working and uh, he got married. He went to stay with the wife the other side, but he went with my last born daughter. So now I told my daughter, my first born daughter you know, lives with me, to call him. Then we had a case. We discussed it and I apologized. I told them how alcoholism is because the much I knew and uh, we learned, you know, I told them to forgive me. Then me say this, alcoholism and drug addiction reduces a king to a poor man or to a pauper. And I would say this, when you, you find yourself drinking daily, drinking heavily over the weekend, drinking, you know, in the sense that sometimes you lose, you, you lose memory, to a summer blackout, that is also a danger. When you calculate in a week how much you are spending and you find that it is so much, please reduce that drinking and go for counseling. And now I want to give people hope, but uh, that do not disown your daughter, do not disown your son, do not disown your husband, do not disown your wife. Please uh, take my number and call us. Please call me because that is, I want to, to, to give hope that you cannot buy life from a supermarket and never give up on people who are drinking. For me, I'm now seven years sober, and I'm happy to say that I want to live a sober life by God's grace. I put God first, I'm now born again, and I thank God that I want to live helping others to get out of alcoholism, because to Nasema, um, you are enslaved by this drink. I used to live to use, and used to live. I used to use to live, yeah, and live to use. I was enslaved by alcohol. I was tied. We normally say now, I am ready. I'm like, uh, what, uh, Saul. Saul persecuted Christians, but me, I went through fire so that I may give other people hope. We, I was in the pit, but my sister-in-law pulled me out. That is what we say in alcoholism. I'm ready to pull other people out. When you see, uh, when you hear my story, please call me. Let's give each other hope. Yeah, because life is very precious. Thank you very much, Terry Washira, for coming to the studio to be with us and to share with us uh, this problem that is really affecting the society today. That has been Terry Washira, a former alcoholism addict who has changed, rehabilitated, and is now an addiction counselor. I've been your host, Solomon Were. This has been the People Talk Show where we bring people and issues of public concern. Until next time, God bless you. <laughs>